Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Edge. So excited that you are here today joining us for another episode. We're going to have a great time today on the show. I'm glad that you are with us today. The Edge is all about showcasing the latest in logistics technology, sponsored by our good friends over at the Manayer Group. Listen, if you are looking to hire and having trouble finding the right people, or it's just it's a time-consuming process. If you want to get your time back and simplify the process, make sure you reach out to the Manayer Group at manayergroup.com. That's M-U-N-A-Y-Y-E-R group.com and or reach out to my good friend Wasim Manair on LinkedIn. He'll be able to help you out uh, for sure. But you definitely want to give him a call. Simplify your recruiting process. Get your time back. You're going to enjoy working with him. I guarantee it. All right, got a couple of announcements to come up, a couple of things coming our way in just a week and a half, everybody. Saturday, December 16th, we have the Reeds Across America event in transportation. Listen, this is one of the best events of the year, laying wreaths on the tombstones of fallen military veterans. It's an incredible event. There's many ways to be involved. It's still not too late to uh, transport a load. If you are a trucker or a trucking company wanting to help out, send an email to trucking at reedsacrossamerica.org and let them know you're interested, especially if you're running that I-95 you know, East Coast corridor because they're all built and shipped out of Maine. And it's an incredible experience for drivers. They let you uh, make a wreath. They help you make a wreath and do all kinds of other cool stuff while you're up there. And then you get to haul those wreaths to their destination. And so it's a phenomenal opportunity to serve and to give back. It's all volunteering your time, volunteering your truck to do that. And they could definitely use your help. But if you're not a trucking company or not a driver out there, you can also participate by donating money for a wreath or volunteering your time to go and lay those wreaths on the cemetery uh, headstones. All you got to do is go to wreathsacrossamerica.org and let them know that you'd like to volunteer or make a donation for Reeds, either for this year or for next year's event to already get started with that. But again, it's December 16th. It's coming up. There's still plenty of time to be involved. Over 4,000 locations across the country. So there's plenty of locations near you to be involved and to volunteer. Again, check them out at reedsacrossamerica.org. Also, as you think about 2024, we got a couple of events that I want to highlight. First of all, if you're a broker or a carrier or a provider to brokers and carriers, like a logistics tech company or a service provider, make sure that you sign up for the Broker Carrier Summit in Kansas City, April 22 through 24. It's going to be an incredible event, unlike any other event in the industry. We'd love to see you there. Go to brokercarriersummit.com to learn more and to sign up today. Also, as you think about your summer starting off in June, we've got the TMSA Elevate Conference, one of my favorite events of the year for sales and marketing professionals in transportation. We just don't do it very well yet as, a, as an industry. We got to do better. So make sure you participate in that event as well. Simply go to tmsatoday.org slash elevate or go to events.tmsatoday.org. Learn about that. Sign up for that. We'll see you in New Orleans in the, in the beginning of June. Looking forward to that. All right. We have a phenomenal guest today. I've known this guy for a while, and uh, they're building some great technology. This is the first time we've had a TMS provider on the show sharing what they're doing in the industry to help brokers out. This is specifically for freight brokers. So please welcome to the show the CEO of 3PL Systems, my good friend, Cameron Robertson. What's up, brother? What's going on, Trey? Thanks for having me on. Appreciate Good to it. have you, man. And I love the song too. Great, uh, great play, man. I love the walk-up songs. You never know what you're going to get. And uh, that's a solid <laughs> one, man. Yeah, I appreciate it. How's everything out in sunny California? It's good. I mean, we uh, have a low temperature today of what, 70 degrees? So <laughs> Don't you know, talk to me. Pretty cold. <laughs> we don't want to hear that. That's not the way to make friends, <laughs> Cameron, to talk about how beautiful it is in Southern California. <laughs> There's a lot of downsides in California as well, but um yeah, <laughs> we won't we won't talk about those. There are a few downsides. <laughs> Coleman, what's up? Good to see you, my friend. Jeremy Thone on the call today as well. Going to be a good time. Jeremy, it's always a good time with you, my friend. Listen, if you're in the comments, make sure you let us know where you're watching from today. And while we're going through uh, the time with Cameron, if you have questions or comments, feel free to throw them in there and we will address as many as we can. If you want us to see it, you got to watch the stream on Beta Consulting Group, uh, our homepage to do that. All right, Cameron. So first time on the show. Excited to have you here. Uh, we do. Uh, we always start off with some tech news. So I'm going to throw a couple of things. Uh, we're going to talk about them just briefly, and then we're going to jump into 3PL Systems and what you guys are actually doing. So you ready? Sure. Let's go. All right. First of all, so the, the company Torque is laying out a roadmap to autonomous trucking in 2027. Uh, they're looking at uh, getting started with autonomous vehicles out on the road. Are you excited about this? Are you nervous about this? What are your thoughts? Uh, so I'm a big believer in one, electric vehicles, and two, autonomous vehicles. I do think it's going to take a lot longer than people think. Uh, the, the technology, although it's a lot safer than a human driver, even today, it's it been is. proven over yeah. and over. Um, 
it's got a long way to go in regards to reacting to certain situations. I mean, that's what differentiates us as humans, right? We're able to react to things very quickly, whereas autonomous vehicles are relying on data sets. And there's certain data sets there's just not a lot of data for, especially when right. it comes to being on the road, uh, certain things that could occur on the freeways and everything else. So I do think there's going to be a huge future with autonomous vehicles, but I still think we got a long way to go until you see those trucks where there's absolutely no humans touching them. Um, so, yeah. It's wild to think about, you know, they have, uh, they have uh, Waymo, which is, you know, driverless taxis. Uh, some people yeah. have taken those before. They are safer uh, historically than people, but people are able to make value and moral judgments that the data, we're still wrestling with that and trying to figure that piece out. I almost feel like it has to be an all or nothing. Like we go all autonomous at the same time. It's going to be hard for people to drive down the road and see a truck, like a semi truck, especially 80,000 pounds hauling down, freight down the road with nobody in the cab. That's just, you yeah. know, that's like, that's like seeing a plane with no pilot i'm not sure we're ready for that even though we do have drones the drones aren't carrying people yet you know i mean that's it's a it's a crazy thought but it's you know it's it's coming for sure the technology is good and it's going to be on display at manifest are you guys going to manifest this year in vegas yeah a few of us should be out at manifest this year um checking things out and also just networking out there so we're looking forward to that it, with autonomous yeah. vehicles it almost feels like we're headed towards minority report if you've ever seen that movie where all the vehicles are running <laughs> on rails it's, yes, uh, it's it gonna feels be that way. It feels <laughs> that way, but it's going to be a great event. Uh, February yeah. 5 through 7 in Vegas. Looking forward to seeing you there. Um, so that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, we do have a coupon code for people. If you're watching and you're thinking about going to Manifest, you can use the coupon code word on the street. So Manifest slash word on the street, and uh, you can get $200 off your registration. So uh, make sure you click on that and enjoy that. But Manifest is going to be fun. They always have autonomous vehicles at Manifest. So you actually get to talk to the engineers, talk to the, the people who are building it, talk to the people on the front lines to ask them questions. And I love that about that show is that they bring the whole supply chain together. So uh, it's probably sooner than we think, but it's also probably going to take longer to really hone in and, and, and perfect uh, that technology as much as possible. So that's going to be pretty wild to uh, to see what happens with that. Also, uh, in, in terms of safety with, with you know, trucks and driving on the road, trucking companies are using cameras a lot more now to reduce liability. I think this just makes sense. I love camera technology on the front in the dash. Plus, it doubles as some B-roll footage if you want anything for, uh, you know, for like marketing. And so, you know, I love this. I think it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. What do you think about cameras in the vehicles? Do you have a camera in your car? I think we're moving in that direction at some point. Uh, not my car, like but yeah, yeah. I, I, I really believe in it can, all, all vehicles should have cameras within them. It's good for you. The driver It's good for the people that may be in an accident. It's good for law enforcement and everything else because it gives you a true view of what actually occurs when you run into a traffic accident or anything else um it's and also maybe even for doing our show maybe you see someone driving down the freeway they want to share there or, or even on this show um but no i i think that it's a, a huge safety feature that really all vehicles should be equipped with and i think tesla has done an incredible job with that because every single vehicle of theirs has a 360 view of what's going on uh, and it automatically captures traffic accidents if you're in an accident things like that um, I think we're going to see a lot more of that technology from all car manufacturers and especially in freight trucks um, where there's so much liability uh, if there's, say, a fatal accident or anything like that. If that ever happens, you know, when that unfortunate event happens, uh, you're able to have that footage. So, uh, yeah, yeah there's, definitely, there's definitely, definitely the safety it. side of it. But I got to tell you, one of my favorite things on TikTok or Instagram or something is to see a dash cam <laughs> video. Like it's kind of entertaining to see what what's happening, you know how people are driving out there. Um, I'm not sure that people want cameras inward facing because then they might, you know, no. get caught on the phone or whatever. But forward facing from a safety perspective is pretty uh, pretty useful and pretty enjoyable. I just think the use of video in general, you know, is, is so powerful now in so many different ways. I mean, we create testimonial videos for people to do what text used to be before. People used to have text testimonials on their website. Now we're doing video. I think people are just enjoying video a lot more across the board. I think it's just clear to see what actually happens, you know? So everybody's got a camera on their phone and everybody's a reporter these days, but I love it. I, I think, I think the more video, the better. So that's great. Also Agreed. last thing we're going to talk about is uh, Washington. We got to talk about Washington because man, they're just over there doing whatever they're doing. Who knows? They've got this proposed EV tax rule that could make it really hard uh, to get the full credit. You know, there's been a lot of controversy about this with, you know, uh, domestic cars getting the credit, foreign cars not getting the credit, those types of things, but they're making it even harder. But I, I like where electric vehicles in general are going. I love electric golf carts. You know, gas golf carts suck. They're terrible. Electric golf carts, awesome. So I'm hoping the same thing is true with cars. Are you an electric vehicle uh, purchaser? Do you know somebody that has one? Have you ridden in one? 
Yeah, yeah, no, I'm definitely an electric vehicle purchaser, a uh, huge fan of them. I mean, once you drive one, it's really hard to go back. I've recently gone back to a gas powered vehicle in the moment. I'm done with this car, I'm going right back to EV. Um, they're incredible <laughs> cars to drive. Uh, a lot of people get scared of like how long, I only have 300 miles, but the technology has gotten so good, it doesn't take long to refuel your, uh, not even refuel, to recharge your vehicle. Um, but yeah, the, the tax credit, um, as these car companies are launching new vehicles that are cheaper and cheaper, I definitely feel like that's gonna go away. Um, you know, when they initially came out, they're really focused towards the higher end market. When you look at Rivian or these other cars are 80 to a hundred plus thousand dollars. Right. That's right. not a it's big part of the market. Yeah. 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 So it's, it's a, uh, it's a cool, cool thing to look at right now. I think we're going to see a lot more of it in the next five to 10 years. So. Well, if, if electric cars are like electric golf carts, you know, I, I shouldn't get in one until I'm ready to buy one because it's the same way. I hate gas golf carts. If we go to a course and have gas golf carts, I automatically think the course is going to suck. Like this is not a good place where I want to be. Electric golf carts are the way to go. That's that's I'm, you know it's my story. And I'm sticking to it. I just uh, think it's the best, best thing out there. All right, this is this is derailing. We got to move move on here. Gonna talk about a couple things before we jump in here, Cameron. A couple things. Are you a coffee drinker? Are you a water bottle drinker? Which one do you want? We're going to send you one of these. Uh, I'm gonna take the coffee mug. <laughs> coffee mug. It's on the way, man. We appreciate the time for you being on the show today and uh, being a part you. of what we're doing. All right, Cameron, real quick, tell everybody a little bit about your story and your background. Uh, you know, you came to 3PL Systems about a decade ago, maybe a little over a decade ago, something like that, and really started at the bottom and worked your way up. Tell everybody a little about that story and how you uh, found yourself in the CEO position. Sure. So I'm not going to dive into all the details, but I joined 3PL Systems just over 12 years ago at the very bottom of the company, technical support. Um, and I was going to school looking uh, at joining a completely different industry that I'm currently in here in logistics. Uh, I'm sure for all of us that fell into this industry, it wasn't kind of our plan. Um, but <laughs> no, anyway, nobody, <laughs> nobody plans to be so not a one fell into this, fell into this industry. What I realized really quickly early on is that this industry was lacking a lot of technology. Um, and even at the time it's, you see this huge gap that you're able to make a difference in where is a lot of other companies. Like when you look at Google, Microsoft, and these other huge tech providers that a lot of engineers dream about joining. They're already on the forefront of technology. It's really hard to make a huge difference uh, when you join a company like that. So when I joined here, I noticed that there was a huge gap. I noticed I could make a difference. And so I went all in uh, with the company pretty early on. Um, technical support, technical analysts, and then just kept going from there all the way to CTO. Uh, from CTO, and then three years ago, I, I took over as the CEO of the organization. And during my time as CTO and CEO, I really changed the, the view or the direction of the company because my vision for this organization, it's all about our customers. It's all about listening to the freight industry where there's a lot of times when you look at tech companies, they're announcing new technology. And we just did a show on this last Friday. And this new term came to us called IT Cool. And it's a lot of this fluff that we start talking about in engineering and IT um, about building things we think the market wants instead of actually going to the marketplace and truly understanding what they're looking for and what they need uh, to fill those gaps when, in their organization. And so one of our philosophies as an organization that I really pushed uh, on our team and also our customer base is this whole idea of heads together. And so we built, built this new platform, um, which is more of just a communication platform called 3PL Heads Together. And Trey, you were able to see that in live time yourself, but what it's all about is bring out the good, the bad, and the ugly as a group. We honestly want to hear the good, bad, and ugly in front of all of our other users because they might be experiencing the same thing and when you have uh, an issue come up that you want to address for your user base, when you do it as a group, you're able to identify what is the best approach to resolve this issue for our entire client base, but also on top of that, uh, the, in the industry. And so it's just a different view of, of how we focus on development. 
Yeah, I mean, it's definitely risky. There's no doubt, like, how, like doing the heads together. But we did get to see it at your first user conference, 3PL Live in, in California, which was awesome. And we got to see these interactions with customers bringing up issues, other customers going, oh, yeah, that's a problem for us, too. Or maybe some customer not quite sure. But then you and, and Michael on stage in real time started just talking about it. Like, oh, that's, that's a good idea. Or here's why we're not going to do that. We've actually thought about that. We know that that's an issue. But let me tell you why a fix doesn't actually make sense right now or there was one time i think where you you just literally said we need to do that like let's do that this week like this needs to happen to me that's easy we need to do that it was a real fascinating conversation to see that and it goes back to your philosophy for building and if we back up just a little bit when you started when you joined in 2011 i mean i'm thinking like back then tms technology there were only the big four you had mercury gate you had mcleod you had tmw and whatever they were buying and and algex and that was that was kind of the market, you know, in terms of like you know a, a TMS op, uh, offerings, especially from the enterprise level. And now we're seeing a lot of new entrants come into the space. Uh, obviously, you guys are are doing some great things, but but you took that philosophy of talking to customers and you 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 shifted it and said we're going to rebuild the platform, but we're going to rebuild it based on what customers want. And this heads together came together. I I just think it's incredible. Why do you think it is that most companies don't take that approach? I think, uh, so this is my own personal belief and opinion, um, but I think a lot of companies are really focused on just looking good. Uh, and so when I when you see a lot of marketing material out there, it's like, oh, we have this new technology, it works perfectly, blah, 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 blah. Where in reality, there's actually a lot more that goes into that. It's not just, hey, you deploy this with a click of a button, it works perfectly. There are issues that can come up because here's a reality. No freight broker, no matter what anyone says, because we work with so many now, no freight broker runs their company the same way. It just, it doesn't happen. And yeah. so what you're trying to identify as a TMS provider or a builder of TMS is what is going to be the best solution to try to get it as close as possible, where it's going to fit a majority uh, of your client's needs. And that is a very difficult thing to do because you have to communicate with not just one customer, you have to communicate with a group of clients in order to identify how are we going to solve this? in a way that's going to work for everyone. And so, for example, a lot of the time when a client brings something to us, uh, we now host focus groups on that development where we're actually meeting not just with the one client that brought the enhancement to us, but now we're actually taking that enhancement. That's a great idea. Now let's host a focus group outside of Heads Together just on this one idea and let's really build upon that. And what that does is it gives us this thing that was maybe 60% of the way there, still a great idea. And now we have this really great idea that we can now build and deploy that our clients can take advantage of. And so we found that that is uh, the best approach for us. And it's really helped uh, achieve, you know, bring on new clients and also uh, increase our client happiness. There is risk to that though, um, because we ran a certain way in the past, there are certain customers that may not like that approach. They don't want to hear from other customers. Their way is the right way. And so there is definitely a balance uh, with dealing with that as well. Yeah. And I think it's fair to say that there, there's no TMS system out there that's going to make everybody happy or resolve no. every issue that a, that a broker has. And it leads to this conversation of buy versus build. And as our good friend Ryan Schreiber likes to say, friends don't let friends TMS, you know, like trying to go out and build their own TMS. But there's kind of that buy versus build concept. How have you guys been able to navigate that so that you're satisfying as many customers in as many ways possible while still maintaining one you know, line of code as opposed to having several different sets of code? Yeah, it's a really good question. So there are two different things that we do as an organization. One, we do offer a base technology purchase that uh, companies, larger companies typically can actually buy and bring into the organization and build upon the infrastructure. Um, but separate from that, the way we architect a lot of our changes within our version two of our software is that they're deployable in such a way where you can configure them. So you may wanna turn certain things off or certain features of that new development to make it fit your need. And so we really take that into consideration with every single development that we work on uh, to make sure that we're fitting everyone's needs. But in regards to buying, if you're a big brokerage and you're going to want a whole bunch of customization and you do things a certain way, buying is most likely gonna be the best case scenario for you because you control your own destiny. You're not relying on a TMS provider to dictate to you, hey, this is what's best for your company. Instead, you control that. You have your own developers dedicated to your company. 
uh, and you can actually drive that. The one thing I wouldn't recommend is going out there as a big brokerage provider. If you're not a tech forward company, meaning you have engineers that are leading your organization, I would not recommend building something from the ground up. It's a much bigger build out than a lot of people think. Uh, and it's very, very difficult um, because a lot goes into it. For example, in our application, we have over 300 API integrations direct with third parties, with partners uh, and other companies that we have to manage day in and day out. So it's it's not a small undertaking. Um, it's a very big undertaking. Yeah, I've got a little bit of experience with that because I spent three years at a TMS provider out of Kansas City. They were an LTL TMS, and then they decided to become a full TMS, you know, to, to really service customers across the board. And it took a long time to to get it off the ground. And they're, they're still in development. They're making some waves now, and they're, they're moving the right direction. Never but ends. It, it, it was a long process, you know. It was a it was a really big process. So you guys basically, it sounds like you have a kind of a, a stopgap measure for that, so that if companies do want to build something, they don't have to start from the ground level. They could start with a foundation. So you guys are selling your code, is what it sounds like. Is that right? Yeah, not the IP, but a copy of the code where they can actually take it and build upon it, uh, and then they can deploy it within their organizations. Um, yeah, it's it's something that we offer, and um, what's unique about it is really the tech stack. I mean, there's no other provider that we're aware of as a company that has a modern tech stack, a modern infrastructure that you can purchase today. And so we're one of the only TMS providers that actually offer that. Yeah, so give a little bit, little options, some SaaS options where it's more of a SaaS model, SaaS subscription with all the support or, uh, you know, buy the code and build. And you got, I think you guys, you guys do a little bit of development with the build as well. Do you help out or are they pretty much on their own if they buy the code? Uh, it, that all depends on how everything plays out during the uh, onboarding process of that. So very yeah. good, very good, excellent, cool. And and you guys have some new features that you've launched recently. I know that ShipMinds is one of the new features that you have. What are some of the new things that you have, and what do they do? We're going to get into a demo in a minute, but what are just some of those things we're going to look at here today? Yeah, there, there, so there's quite a few things that we've launched uh, over the last 12 months, uh, and also very enhanced. Uh, much further than they were 24 months ago. So ShipMind is one of them. That's full shipment automation around LTL, truckload, and other modes of transportation. Um, we also have Power BI integrated directly into the interface of Brokeware. This is for the customers of ours that want to build their own reports. Uh, they might have a, a data analyst on staff. They might hire someone outside the company to come in and build these reports. But what's really awesome about that feature is that you have the power to build any report you want, graphical report, implement it directly in your staff portal based on the individual, based on your admin users, whoever it may be. So you can customize it per user, or you can drop that directly into the carrier portal. So carriers are able to log into our application, have their own portal to manage loads, uh, documents, everything else. Uh, you can drop that into your customer portal. So you can really meet all those reporting needs I, with this one of the most powerful BI tools on the market today. Um, separate from that, uh, one of the things we're gonna talk a little bit about is just the Mass Raider, uh, a technology that allows you to respond to RFPs very, very quickly. Um, we're gonna talk about Carrier Portal, we're gonna talk about uh, the mobile application a little bit, and we're just gonna do a real quick overview of all these things because what we're not gonna to show today is the ability of creating loads, managing staff, what? managing I mean, customers, come on, man. managing <laughs> carriers. So uh, the system is a vast platform, carrier portal, staff portal, sales portal, um, customer portal, all of that's there, um, which I feel is just, you know, you should have it with any TMS you're on. So we're only gonna focus on things today that I think are impactful. Very cool. We're going to jump into the demo in just a minute. And by the way, just kudos to your team because at the 3PL Live event that you had for users, your team did an amazing job creating content in a way that was easy to consume and very helpful. I mean, I saw a lot of people paying attention and learning new tricks about how to use the system. You guys did it in a way that was great with screenshots, making it super easy to see. So kudos to you guys on that. That was a phenomenal event. We appreciate the opportunity to be a part of that. And before we jump into the demo, we got to take a quick break. We got to pay the bills around here. And so folks, listen, if you are recruiting, if you need help with your recruiting, if you're hiring and just need a little help, make sure you reach out to my friend Wasim Manero with the Manero Group. Does a great job. And listen, you don't have to take it from us. We create customer testimonial videos for people. We had the opportunity to do this for him. So take a moment, listen to what his customers had to say about working with him and the Manero Group. The Manero Group 
they definitely went far above my expectations. We had not been working with Wasim and his team. I'm sure that my team would look very different. Oh, the quality of, of Wasim's candidates are, are top notch. Wasim and his company definitely gave me an edge against everybody else I imagine that was going for the position. My favorite thing about working with the Monero Group is really just the, it feels like a partnership. You know, Wasim is the go-to guy in the industry. If you're not talking to him, you should be now. Love Monair, love Wasim. He's so great. The Monair Group's phenomenal. So make sure you reach out to him, monairgroup.com, and, uh, and make sure you tell him that you heard about it right here on the edge. Okay, it is demo time, Cameron. We're going to get this set, set up. I just realized that we forgot to give you the instructions ahead of time. So it's real simple. Once you have that screen set up, we'll do that and we'll jump into uh, whatever it is that you want to show us here. It's it just whatever order that you want to go in, uh, which will be great. Um, and, you're, and I think that uh, you're going to have another 3PL Live event probably in 2025. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. Q1 of 2025, we are having a 3PL live event. Uh, separate from that, we are having our three virtual events next year uh, for 3PL live. And then we're having three heads together virtual events next year as well. Um, so very customer oriented uh, for uh, for us. So yeah. love seeing that. All right. Very good. Are you going to have any issues with this, the shift save? And again, our shift S, I forgot to give you the instructions, man. It's small. That's on me. That's that's. <laughs> That's on me. It's an amateur hour around here today, but that's all right. We'll get this up here in just a minute. No that worries. Uh, no, we should be good to go. Oh, beautiful. We got it. Okay. All right. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and share the screen here and then have you walk us through it. So what's the first thing that you want to show us here on the BrokerWare platform? Sure. So the first thing I want to focus on is just Power BI and what I meant by that and really showing you the power of it. Um, so for example, here on the dashboard of BrokerWare, when you first log in, very simplistic dashboard allowing you to manage your freight and any type of mode of transportation that you're currently running. But down here, you're gonna see Power BI. So any report that you create with inside of Power BI, you're able to customize it and then drop that directly into your interface. And the beauty of it is that you don't have to log in. So you can create these reports um, after they're implemented inside of your application for your customers, carriers, or staff. Uh, they're just there and they're all interactive. So you can drill into data depending on how you build these. Um, you know, you can have filters, anything you want, which is all of the technology that Power BI reports or Power BI builds. Um, one of the cool things about that is that the Power BI team at Microsoft is massive. To build a strong BI tool takes a, a lot of engineers. And so instead of us trying to build something ourselves, we're bringing best in class directly into our interface and it's actually a rather cheap license. It's only like $10 a month directly through Microsoft for you to be able to do this. Um, to show you how easy this is to integrate, uh, I'm just going to click here. I'm going to go to the customer profile. I'm going to type in Disney Anaheim because we're here in Southern California. I'm going to grab a link from Power BI. And I'm just go going to go ahead and drop this in. And you're going to see that I now have added this Power BI report for our client, Disney. Um, so when I go to the customer list, type in Disney, go to Disney Anaheim, you're going to see Argus, which is a tracking map. Um, but down here, now when your customer logs in, that specific customer login that I tied it to, they'll now see this Power BI report in their interface. So you can create any type of custom report and you can utilize that as a sales tool for your sales team. Data, as we all know, is one of the most powerful tools we have today in business. And it goes for the same for your customers. Building easy to read reports for their shipping managers or their, their executives, or even their operations and accounting staff uh, makes it really simplistic for you to sell to their needs. Um, okay, so, so you're able to, the so let, me, let, me ask you, let me ask you a question about this real quick. So you're able to create a specific report for a customer, for a carrier, put it into their portal. They'll be able to see it yeah. when they log in. And it, I assume that maybe it updates monthly or whatever the frequency is. It'll update the data. They don't have to keep doing it. Or they could change Correct. the report. They could add, can add multiple reports in there? They can, yeah. So multiple yeah. reports. And also it's based on how you configure it. It can be mm -hmm. live time. It can be daily. It can be weekly or monthly, however you want to configure it. Uh, you have that ability. 
Wow, very cool. I love that because I think data, you know, when we think about data, obviously we talked about this before uh, in another show, I mean, clean data is the most important thing. You gotta have to have you know, clean data, but then what do you do with it? How do you make it actionable for a customer, for a carrier? Uh, how do you make it actionable in, in your buying decisions and who you're going to work with? You know, what partners you're going to you're going to give more loads to or work with. So I love that feature. That's that's, that's incredible. Yeah. So uh, while we're on Disney Anaheim, what we're going to talk about now is just configuration of ShipMind. So um, ShipMind is a feature that we just talked about that allows you to, to actually automate loads with inside of the platform. Um, that means if a shipment is created, whether that be through API whether it be through EDI or some type of other automated process or even a manual shipment creation from a customer portal or staff portal, this system is going to automatically take that load over and handle the rest, meaning the rating, the dispatching, the tracking, the invoicing, uh, the carrier AP, all of that can be automated utilizing this tool, ShipMind. Um, so it's a very simple interface that we built. Um, I believe this is the only interface like this. It allows you to select what you as a company require for your automation. So if you require more data uh, for a specific customer, you can turn that on by just clicking the data points that you want before the shipment automation kicks in for that customer. And does it save automatically when you click the button? Like you click, you, you uncheck it or check it, it just saves it or do you have to hit save somewhere? Uh, you save the configuration down. That's the important, of the man. Screen. That's critical to know that, man, because <laughs> I've, I've made too many that mistakes. Idea now. <laughs> I've made too many mistakes where I've made a change. <laughs> I've made a change. I didn't hit save and I lost it. So, okay. So you do have to hit save configuration. Okay. That's good. As long as you know it, that's the important thing. You got to know it. Might need just yeah. to put a big banner up top, like be sure to save, you know, something like that. Cause a guy like me, I'd click it. I'd forget to save and be like, what happened? Okay. All right. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> no worries. Um, so shipment information here, you can see, okay, I want to actually enable this for LTL and then I want to enable it for truckload. So this will only pick up loads that belong to the LTL or truckload mode family, uh, in order to automate those, all the other things, whether it be air freight, ocean, drainage, whatever it may be, all of that will stay out of the automation. So you can actually select what you want automated and what you don't want automated directly through this interface. Okay. All right. Um, Hold on for a second. Okay. All right. So I know LTL shipments are, are much easier to automate because you have class, you have weight, you have length. And if you have all the features, it's easy to quote it through APIs from the different, you know, common carriers that are out there, but you're able to do this through truckload. So you, so you must have some pricing, um, you know, data that's, that's accessible through this as well to, to quote it automatically and dispatch it. Like, like how, how, how far does it go on the truckload side? Sure. So uh, we're continuously advancing it, but some of the things that are worth uh, highlighting here is that we do have a lot of clients that own their ass own assets. Um, so they're able to integrate that directly into this interface for their truckload side. So they don't have to manage uh, covering that load and rating that load because they already know what it's going to cost them. Separate from that, we do partner with pricing providers in the industry that also feedback pricing for that specific lane. And you can build in markups uh, you know, for that lane. So automatically select those, uh, that pricing model that you have built into the application. Um, there, there's a lot of different things that we do around that also through the load boards, uh, load board automation, um, you know, where it's automatically going you know, to post the load boards and try to cover the load. So there's just a lot of different layers for truckload uh, that are taken into consideration. Like you said, though, LTL is definitely a lot easier to automate than it is truckload. Um, LTL automation really should be available in any TMS provider uh, out there, but it's it's definitely a strong suit of ours. Uh, for example, one of our customers, larger customers, they automate over 3,000 loads a day through ShipMind uh, utilizing this tool. Um, just to give you, you know, how scalable this platform really is. Yeah, I was uh, just about to ask about you, does it automation. work? That's the, that's the real question we have it here. Does. does it actually work? And you've got, uh, you've got yeah, customers 3,000 a day. Wow. <laughs> they spoke at 3PL Live and they uh, actually confirmed that. But yeah, <laughs> it, it does. <laughs> nice. Yeah, that's awesome. I, I love when you can just you know take things off of people's plate. I think that's where all technology is headed is how do we remove some of these, you know, these redundancies uh, to give people a lot more time, which is awesome. So, and yeah, Jeremy, it does look good, man. It is look nice. It's a good look. All right. Okay. So ShipMine is there and ShipMine, um, I thought I heard this at 3PL Live, but correct me if I'm wrong. Um, non- 
3PL systems customers could potentially access Shipmine if they wanted to. Is that correct? Did I hear that right? Uh, that is correct. So it does have APIs that you can actually connect to. So say you have your home homegrown TMS and you don't want to do what we just did for the last 32 months, uh, building an entire automation platform. You can actually purchase a license to just Shipmine to actually integrate the APIs into your own TMS. And this will actually automate your shipments in your TMS. So that is an option. If you already have a TMS, I'm not looking for a TMS. We do have that ability to integrate into other TMSs and actually power your shipment automation, um, which will save you a bunch of money <laughs> in I mean, regards you're, you're, to doing the R&D. You're essentially making the, fun making the functionality accessible uh, even if they don't need the whole the whole block and tackle the whole system. Correct. Yeah. 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 Love that. Love that. Okay. So ShipMine is relatively new. One customer doing 3,000 shipments a day. Clearly it's working. That's awesome. All right. What else? What else you got? What else do you want to show us? Sure. So uh, real quick, I'm not going to spend a bunch of time here, but to show you how configurable this platform really is, it does allow you to turn all different types of things on or off. Like for example, if a load's already been moved, you're obviously not going to want to e-dispatch that load. You're just going to want to move it through the automation. So there are options for those types of loads. Um, you can also do delivery options. What, what needs to be met or if we need to rerun the LCR before the delivery actually occurs or a invoice is created to verify the rates are accurate and correct, uh, Shipline actually does all of that automatically without you having to get involved. Um, same with invoicing options, you can choose how it invoices. It has protections in place that will actually look at and verify that your company's being profitable before it moves forward with automation. And the beauty of all this uh, and how it all comes together is that your team at your brokerage is now focused on just the things that fail. They're not focused on the things that truly should be automated. So they're reacting to things. Uh, we don't have any failed shipments here on that one, but each one of these boxes you'll see. So for example, failed to dispatch. I can click in here, I can look at the automation and I can see that this automation failed. Uh, and in a live environment, what's gonna happen is the detailed status is gonna tell you exactly why it failed. So your team can then address the failures. Um, not not the so right information, not enough information, you know, something, exactly. connectivity, yeah. you know, not established or whatever it might be. And, I, and, and I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm a pretty simplistic person as well. One thing that I like about the configuration side of it is how easy it is to turn things on and off uh, and to see that they're turned on and off. I love the fact that it turns green. Um, I don't know. That's, that's, that's maybe a simple choice you guys made, but I think that's that's genius because it just needs to be super easy. So it's just easy to know what's on and what's off. That's great. There's no no toggles. I'm not a fan of those. I think color coded. You guys got that one right. Yeah, and we do a lot of that with even like required fields separate from uh, automation. Just saying, hey, these fields are required. It's that simple. You just turn it on yeah. or off. You dictate what's required, what's not. Um, moving on from there, uh, one of the other things I, I do want to talk a little bit about is Brokeware actually has built-in functionality for multi-currency. And what I mean by that is we have clients in Canada, we have clients in Mexico, we have clients in the U.S. Um, our system can be takes, a major problem. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so we, we actually have uh, multi-currency built into our interface, and it's actually any type of currency that you can think of worldwide um, built into the interface. So you can select, is this customer going to go off Canadian dollar? Is it going to go off the U.S. dollar? Um, whatever it may be, it's built into the interface and you can choose whether or not you want to convert utilizing a platform, a uh, third party platform called Fixer IO, which is a conversion platform. A lot of companies out there use them um, or not to convert because a lot of the times uh, what happens is they actually want to recognize the conversion in our accounting system um, from what I've learned uh, and working with these customers. So that is also uh, an option um, inside of this platform. Moving on from there, another cool feature that we have is when you're onboarding a larger customer or really any customer for that matter, it, we have built an automated registration. And so say I want to send out registration links um, to an individual. So you'd be able to select, I want to send a registration out to Michael S at test123.com. I can send a registration link out to him. And what that's going to do is it's going to send him a link to actually register for this specific 
customer account. And where this really comes into play is for our clients that have large customers where they need to send hundreds of logins uh, for that customer portal rather than manually going in and creating each individual login for every single customer, you actually put that in your customer's hands to register the links. There's a lot of security that goes in behind that uh, to make sure only the person receiving the link can register. Um, but that is also an option in our interface. So if you're if I'm a broker, let me, let me back up on this. If I'm a broker and I bring on a new customer and I want to get all the users on that customer side of the, of the house, I want to get them registered to log into their customer portal. Instead of having to put in all of their email addresses one at a time and do it, you're saying that we could send one out to them and then they could just like forward it to their team. How does that work on their side to, to make that process speed up? Great question. So all you need is a list of email addresses. So whoever you're onboarding, they send you a list of all their staff email addresses that need to have access to your environment. Uh, you can actually send this out to 2,500 emails at once. Um, can you upload a file? <laughs> no, you just copy and paste it uh, directly into this uh, field here. Uh, you can't upload a file right now for the registration link, but um, you can do that through us. So if you have data that already exists uh, and you want to upload all your customer logins, that is an option through our support team. I just know this, this man. Is... Whenever I'm typing email addresses, I always seem to hit the wrong button somewhere and it messes everything up. So I'd, uh, it, it's always nice when you can upload a file and not have to have my fat fingers screw things up. I'm sure there are some people out there that can relate. Yeah, I, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, I, I can relate with that. <laughs> so fat fingers are rough right now, especially on the cell phones. That's for sure. All right, keep going. <laughs> cool. So uh, one of the other cool things uh, about our uh, platform that we built, again, is the Mass Raider. And so under tools, um, you can... I'm sorry, where did it go? There's so many features in our platform. I'm sorry, we somebody, moved it out. That's what somebody happened. Develop, somebody <laughs> development switching things up on you. Yeah, so <laughs> we uh, have built a mass rater. What this allows you to do is download a rate template. So once you download that template uh, to your desktop, you fill out the rate template. You then upload that into our interface. After you upload that sheet, it allows you to click on next step and you can choose which tariff you want to rate that sheet against. It can be one tariff, it can be multiple tariffs, and it's going to allow you to pull the top three rates that come back for every single lane. Is and this what primarily that, LTL uh, shipments, RFPs? Is that what that is, specifically LTL? We, it really depends. So we have clients that utilize this with truckload, but they have unique situations where they own uh, their assets. Um, we have clients that do it based off data sets. There's, it just really depends on how you configure it. But primary use of this is through LTL. Yeah. Okay. But you also have, integra I know, you know, just from the 3PL Live conference, you have in integrations with green screens and uh, with other rate providers as well. Yep. How are those rates then utilized? Is that also utilized through RFPs or through um, individual loads or what, what, how are those uh, individual you know, loads? Utilized? Yeah. So uh, integrations for rating providers like green screens and others. Um, that's all done through the individual loads where it's automatically going to pull back information for that lane that they're trying to cover. Um, all integrated directly into our interface, um, which is actually a really nice feature that they offer. So our philosophy with that, Trey, with any partner integration that we work with, is that our customers should never have to leave our interface. And so even one of our criteria when we're looking at new partners to bring on at 3PL Systems mm -hmm is identifying that they have the technology and the APIs to make that happen. Um, the last yeah. thing I want to do and the last thing I'm going to get excited about is if I bring on a new integration and say, hey, we're integrated with ABC company and you have to have two windows open right. in order to use right. it. And so yeah. we're really big about bringing it all into the interface. Yeah, I, I like working with technology companies that understand that as well. You know, I'm, one of the companies that I'm really high on is uh, 123 Loadboard because they have that philosophy as well. It's like, you know, they, they have the Loadboard and the rating tools and all these other things that, that customers can utilize, but they really want customers to work in their platform, in, in, in the, the interface of their TMS and just access their tools, green screens that way as well. And I really think that's the future. You know, the, the, the tech companies that want to build an interface that people have to use, I think are just not going to do as well as the ones who build it in and make it easy to use. So I, I completely agree with you on that. Completely agree. Yeah. And then uh, just one last thing on the mass rater. Say you have a large file, 500,000 lines, whatever it may be. Once you upload that, it's not all going to happen at once. You can go on with your day, 
you can run it at night. Um, and what's going to happen is you're going to see this progress bar over here on the right, uh, giving you a percentage of how far it is through it. So it does take time to rate, especially if you're utilizing API endpoints against carriers, whether that be SMC3, whatever it may be, um, it takes a little bit of time to do that. So that's that's all done in the background in a process that runs. So a really nice feature there. Um, <clears throat> One other thing before uh, we wrap up here, or two more things, uh, the API Dev Center that we have, we are really big on making it easy for your customers, for your uh, ERPs, WMS, CRMs, whatever it may be, to integrate with our platform. So we have a very robust API suite available with over 100 API endpoints that you can integrate and pull data directly out of the system or into the system um, that are just readily available. And for our customers, I know some companies have different uh, viewpoints on this. It's absolutely no charge for any of them. They can integrate our APIs. We want them to integrate APIs because um, we're big believers in uh, well-integrated systems. Yeah, I think the API self-serve is such a, a critical feature. Make it just super easy and remove the friction. They don't even have to talk to you guys. They can either pull the documentation and give it to a provider that needs it, or they can enter their credentials and be connected to those things that you're already connected to. Man, that's that's huge from just a, a user feature and, and removing that friction. Speeds it up really, it, really fast. Yeah, and we, we have the same philosophy with EDI. EDI is a, a data technology to us. It's not going anywhere. Um, it's so widely used in our industry that we have to take care of it. And so we're really big believers in giving you an interface. If you have all the credentials and know how to configure it, you can actually set up outbound 210s, 214s, 204s, whatever it may be, to your customers, to your carriers um, through our interface. Uh, and once they're set up, you have direct access to those links. Uh, and then all of this information is just hosted in the background and just works. Um, yeah, yeah. So self-service for us is really big. These are kind of the intangibles that should come with the TMS. Um, so it's just part of our philosophy. Make things easy to gain access to. And always one of the things I think all tech companies struggle with is, hey, this exists. You know, you should adopt it and you should use it. Um, yeah. But it, it's all, you know, it's all there. And then the final thing I just want to touch base on is the native mobile app that we built for iOS and Android. So we pretty much took what you see here, almost every single feature that you see in the interface and built a native app for Android and iOS that allows you to access all this technology on the go that is actually designed for mobile environments. Um, you can also build TMS interfaces on the web that are designed for mobile platforms, but it's very hard to get everything 100% right. Whereas if you build a native mobile app, it's designed for it right off the bat. And uh, that actually got a much larger adoption than we thought it would. At first, it was kind of one of those projects, hey, let's see what happens. Um, but now a lot of users uh, utilize the mobile platform as well. I was going to ask about that. Like what kind of you know user adoption do you have on something like that? And can you tell how many, you know, how many times they're accessing it through that versus through uh, you know, the web portal? Yeah, we, we do. We track uh, pretty much every single login uh, through our interface and also on the back end, we're, we're monitoring that. Um, and then we get statistics based on Android usage, iOS usage, and we can see active users in there as well. Uh, it's in the hundreds a, a day now um, in regards to actual active users utilizing uh, the Back mobile app. They have. Yeah, very cool. Yeah. Yeah. And so I'll it's tell you definitely what, gained a lot of adoption. In a world where I'm running around, you know, taking my kids everywhere and, you know, have so many activities and those types of things, having a really good mobile application is huge. Like I use HubSpot. I think they've got a decent CRM application. I use it quite a bit. And it just it just helps out in, in many ways, making it really easy to use. So, um, you know, app fatigue is one thing, but when it's a really good app and it's something you need every day for your job, if it works, it's a blessing. So I think that's I think that's really great. All right. Well, you may be done. Cameron talking about the feature of the system, but I'm not done asking you questions just yet. So now we got to jump into the hot seat just a little bit. So, you know, TMS is a difficult sale to get somebody to say yes to do that. What are some of the what are some of the better selling points that you guys have that that have, have, have brought some comfort uh, and a little bit of ease to people making that decision? That's a tough decision. Sure. So one of the big things is word of mouth. Um, a lot of our customers are going to go to bat for us and actually say, this team actually cares what you're thinking and what, what you want done within the environment. We listen to our client base. Uh, it's a huge driver for us. Is it, it's, it's such a simple thing to us 
to just, hey, give your client an ear, listen to what they have to say, and then address their concerns. Obviously, we can't address every single concern. Uh, there, for any TMS provider out there, a lot of us get multiple enhancement requests a day, but you just have to address the things that are important that are going to have true impact and ROI uh, for your customers. So that's definitely one thing uh, that makes it easier for us is that we have a lot of customers that will actually um, speak to potential customers. And we're really big about that, recommending to um, you know potential prospects speak to our users. Don't just listen to us, speak to our actual users that have utilized the platform for years. <laughs> so and you see Mike, Mike here, Sternberg. your director of sales, uh, he's claiming that he won't lie to you. And I, I can vouch for him that for sure. <laughs> but, you know, I think I think there's something to be said about, um, you know, I almost wish that we had recorded some moments <clears throat> from that Heads Together in LA, just as B-roll footage so people could see what that was like. Because again, I you know, I when you it. see customers that, oh, you do, beautiful. Well, you guys I should do. use that then. Throw that out there in some of your marketing content, but I think that helps for people to understand that. And certainly, you know, Cameron, uh, five, 10 years ago, uh, making the shift to a web-based TMS was probably a little bit more scary. And now that, you know, uh, your platform and some of the others that are that are making some inroads makes it easier across the board, I think, for customers to make that decision, uh, even though it's a, a pretty big one. So the next question is about onboarding. I think this is a question that customers want to know about. Like, what is that onboarding process like? And, and, and is it scary? You know, like what, what's going to happen to my data? What's going to happen? How long is this going to take? We're going to have any downtime. Can't have any downtime. Yeah. So it's a really good question. So every single client has a different onboarding process. So one of the things up front that we do is listen to what their needs are. We have to understand what is their expectation during the onboarding process. So when Michael Sternberg, uh, for example, makes a sale uh, and he's onboarding a new client, he's going to have a hands-on pass-off to our onboarding team who is going to have an initial call to identify what those needs are from that client and we're going to look at things such as what data needs to be uploaded what's the timeline on getting that data uploaded uh, we're going to look at who's going to be part of these training calls so we separate our concerns what i mean by that is operations accounting um sales all of those individuals are going to have different trainings that are adjusted to their needs and one of the most powerful tools that we built a few years back and we're continuing to add to is 3PL University. And what 3PL University is, is a platform that you can access at any hour of the day from anywhere in the world and actually teaches you about our platform and how to utilize certain features or parts of the product uh, to, you know, again, middle of the night, for some reason you're up, you need to figure out how to do something. You just go on 3PL University and type in what I'm looking for. And there's a video right there in front of you that actually teaches you how to operate within the application. And so um, there, there's a lot of different steps to onboarding. Again, they're adjusted based off the company, what the requirements are, what type of modes of transportation they're running, uh, things like that. So very hands-on onboarding process. Yeah, and I love the, the 3PL University concept because I think too many tech companies, one, I think in general, tech companies do a really poor job of onboarding and training. Like a lot of times you'll buy a piece of tech and you'll only use 10, 15, 20%. You don't even know the full breadth of what it can do. And I think that's a huge miss. But then two, when you do have those questions or you do forget how to do something because you only do it once a quarter and you just forgot you know, how to do it, it's so nice to have something where you can go and get a little tutorial on the features and how to use it. So um, I love that. Is that, a, is that a YouTube channel? Is it a part of the web page? Is it in, built into the platform? So we actually have a completely separate support site that actually it's a part of. Um, so it's all hosted on YouTube, but brought into this new website, or not new website, it's been there for a long time, but it's all just right there on a website accessible directly through our interface. Uh, and another thing that we do around that is we do have live chat directly built into our application. All of our support is here in the U.S. Um, you get a live person. There is no robots. We don't believe in deploying robots. It's one of our philosophies, actually. Uh, we want you to have a live person. We want you to talk to a human uh, to help address your needs. We don't want you to have to explain to a robot, hey, I need help with A, B, and C. And then we're going to try to find someone that fits that need. Uh, all of our staff is cross-trained, um, so anyone should be able to help you. Just on the customer service side, no bots, right? I mean, you know, bots can be useful elsewhere. but uh, On automation, we use uh, stuff like that. But in regards <laughs> yeah. to customer service, we know how, I know okay. how frustrating right. it is when I call all a right. credit card company. 
and it's a it's a robot. <laughs> I know, I know. There's part of you that goes, "Dang it, <laughs> this is not going to yeah. be a pleasant call." I'm sure it'll get better over time, but uh, but that's where it is. All right, so Cameron, somebody's interested in learning more about 3PL systems and becoming a customer. What's the best way to get connected with you guys? Yeah, so uh, go into 3PLSystems.com. You can reach directly out at us uh, directly through that webpage. You can reach out to sales at 3PLSystems.com or even call us directly, 800-965-8205. Um, we're available all the time for you, and uh, we'd be happy to share more with you on what we're working on, what we're doing. Cameron, you made it. Nice job, my friend. Well done. Always a pleasure having you on the show. I'm going to chat and uh, all the work that you do for industry and for technology. Love what you guys are doing and appreciate it, man. Good luck to you. And again, thank you so much. We appreciate it, Trey. Thank you so much. All right, everybody. Make sure you come back every month for an episode of The Edge. We're going to have some more great guests that are coming up. And if you're interested in becoming a sponsor of The Edge, make sure you reach out to us by just sending us a quick email to hello at betacomputation.com. We will talk about a bunch of opportunities to get your brand out there. Also, don't forget, we've got the ladies' edition of Word on the Street this Friday with special host Jennifer Carpenter from Maine, leading that up with her incredible women on the show. And then we're in a great place. Make sure you check that out. And don't forget, every Tuesday, new episode of Out comes out on LinkedIn Live, Facebook. Until next time, we will see you guys with some on the Edge, sponsored by the Monero Group.